الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه وأزواجه أجمعين أما بعد الحمد لله على كل حال My health has been given me some problems Uh, as you can tell, but insha'Allah, we need to talk about some important topics. Uh, soon, insha'Allah, we will announce a live lecture coming in a few days about the topic of voting. Uh, the U.S. elections are coming uh, in about two weeks, and uh, people have been asking me to talk about this topic. So, insha'Allah, we will announce that lecture uh, very soon. Uh, even though my health has been under pressure, well, Alhamdulillah, I have been working every day as much as I can, unless I'm out of the house, on three books at the same time. Um, the first one is the third edition of the Holy Wars Crusades Jihad book, third edition. The, first, uh, the, the first edition came after what they call 9-11. And then the second edition, uh, which you can find on Amazon. Uh, and the third edition is coming soon, inshallah. 400 pages, numerous references, uh, very few notes footnotes and inshallah uh, it will be uh, much better than the first and the second editions because uh, we included in it the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, Syria, Yemen, uh, Libya uh, and other areas. So inshallah it will have these topics in addition to the war on the Palestinian people by the Jews and those Muslims who are supporting the Jews against the Palestinian Muslims. Uh, we will announce this book inshallah. Uh, a second book I'm working on at the same time with the Jihad book every day. I work on this book when I get tired. I start the other book. I feel energized get tired, the third book, then start again, Alhamdulillah. The second book is uh, uh, the fourth, uh, I'm sorry, the third book from the nine books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed me and my family to produce since uh, Ramadan. From Ramadan until Eid al-Adha, we finished nine books. One and two are already on the website for free, three and four, uh, coming soon, insha'Allah. The third book is about uh, evangelical poems or poetry. And uh, the fourth book is about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to legislate in the religion. They're coming soon, insha'Allah. Uh, among the books that I also started, insha'Allah, I'll finish as soon as I finish with these three books. Uh, it's an important book. Before I start with that, let me uh, say something to you, brothers and sisters. Uh, the laptop, the only laptop I have, uh, I've been working on it or using it for a couple of years, uh, suddenly died. And we had to borrow money from the Dawah account to buy the desktop that I now have, Wallah alhamd, a new desktop with the, for the first time a wide screen so I can see the words clearly. The first time I have this wide screen, uh, the cost was close to $1,400. I asked a brother to help, but I don't think he can. Usually he does quickly. 
if he is not uh, able, he takes time to answer. So uh, if you can, bi'idhnillah, help. Jazakumullah khair. Send me an email, islamlife at gmail.com. Islamlife at gmail.com. I-S-L-A-M-L-I-F-E at gmail.com. This is my email. Uh, or you can donate on the website islamlife.com islamlife.com uh, this is zakah eligible bi'idhnillah we can take zakah because we are doing so much uh, with regards to explaining the religion and defending it a classical case as Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal Imam ibn Baz rahimahumullah stated that they deserve a part of the zakah why don't you help us, brothers? Uh, we need to put the money back in the account designated for da'wah. Fourteen hundred dollars. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. So the book that I mentioned before, and uh, I'll try my best to, inshallah ta'ala, uh, speak as loud as I can, but uh, the asthma, wallahi alhamd. Uh, my book will be titled Similarities Between Buddhism and Sufism A Response to Hamza Yusuf's Essay Buddha in the Quran with a question mark It's in response to a book titled Common Ground Between Islam and Buddhism by Riza Shah Kazimi Riza Shah Kazimi if there is a typical Shia name, this is it. Rida Kazim. With an essay by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, it says this on the cover of the book. With an essay by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, introduced by H.H. His Highness, the 14th Dalai Lama, H.R.H. His Royal Highness, Prince Ghazi bin Muhammad, and Professor Muhammad. Hashim Kamali. The Dalai Lama is the same one, the Buddhist, they worship him, is the same one uh, who said to Europe, you're better off without Muslims. This is the guy you need to ask about similarities between Islam and uh, Buddhism, common ground. Uh, the Buddhist monks in Burma are the ones who have been leading the attacks on the Muslims in Burma, the Rohingya. <sighs> so many of them were killed, hundreds of thousands expelled, and the Buddhist monks who were not supposed to touch women killed women and girls and raped women and girls, Muslim. This is the person you really need to tell you about common ground between Islam and Buddhism. As for the prince and the professor, later in the book, inshallah, we'll talk about them. This is a part of what Hamza Yusuf wrote under title Buddha in the Quran, question mark, his question mark. Buddhism sees itself as a reformist movement that emerged from the preceding Hindu tradition. Similarly, Islam sees itself as a reformist movement, one that emerged from the preceding Abrahamic traditions and in response to perceived Jewish and Christian spiritual dissipation perceived. Both Buddhism, Buddhism and Islam have universalist claims with strong core doctrines such as the five pillars and six articles of faith in Islam and the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path in Buddhism. Let me go straight to the topic. 
Islam came to reform the religion for humankind by bringing them back to Tawheed, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without partners. There are no Abrahamic traditions. This is a false notion. Ibrahim alayhi salam was a Muslim. He wasn't a Jew or a Christian. To make him a Muslim, a Jew and a Christian at the same time is unbelievable. Later, later, inshallah. We already have a video about interfaith and the three Abrahamic religions also. A couple of videos, a number of videos. So, Islam, the reform is to bring Tawheed back to earth. And he mentioned here, Hamza Yusuf, the five pillars, meaning practical pillars of Islam, to testify that there is no deity, ilah, worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. To pray, fast, give charity, zakah, and to perform hajj once in a lifetime at least for those who can afford the trip to Mecca and back. The six pillars of Iman and tu'mina billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al-akhir wal qadari khayrihi wa sharrih. These six pillars are built in with Iman. Five pillars they don't work. One has to believe in all six pillars of Iman. To believe in Allah, in the angels, the books that Allah revealed to the messengers, his messengers. To believe in the last day, the day of judgment, and in Al-Qadr, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written the predestination of everything and everyone. We choose what we choose of actions and statements and ideas. Uh, Allah knows it beforehand, but we don't. So it's our choice throughout. So this is about Al-Qadr. Let's talk about the Buddha. This guy. This happy guy. Look how happy he is. The Buddha stated definitely and a number of times that there was no creator God nor was there a soul. And to mina billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al akhir wal qadari khayrihi wa sharrih. They're all gone. He did not believe that there is a creator God, nor was there a soul. We're all empty. Thus the Buddha himself rejected the idea of a creator God, and Buddhist philosophers have even argued that belief in an eternal God is nothing but a distraction for humans seeking enlightenment. Enlightenment in what? If don't believe, you don't believe there is Allah, there is a God, creator for everything, how can you compare Islam and Buddhism? What kind of reform is this? Uh, if, as Hamza Yusuf here says, that the Buddhism came to reform Hinduism, Hinduism, they believe in <laughs> so many gods, from the elephant to the cow to the dog to the rat you know check it out we have so many gods so they cancelled all of these and there is no creator god for everything we agree there's only one creator god for everything and the idols of the hindus are all fake and uh, they worship idols they're kuffar they're mushrikeen 
they contradict the essence of Tawheed totally, completely and fully. This guy is the same thing. He stated definitely and a number of times that there is no creator God or a soul. So how can you mention the six pillars of Iman which lead one to practice Islam, the five pillars of Islam at a minimum, because these are the cornerstones, to a religion that doesn't believe in Allah, all the angels, here's my hand, all the angels, all the books, all the prophets. There is no last day. As for Al-Qadr, it's a part of faith, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unbelievable, isn't it? Britannica explained the four noble truths. We're not going to talk about the eightfold stuff. Uh, it's in the book, inshallah. Maybe later, Allah knows. Britannica explained the four noble truths, saying, Awareness of these fundamental realities led the Buddha to formulate the four noble truths. The truth of misery, or uh, literary, literally meaning suffering, but connoting uh, uneasiness or dissatisfaction. The truth that misery originates within the craving for pleasure and for being or non-being, to be or not to be. The truth that this craving can be eliminated and the truth that this elimination is the result of following a methodical way or path. Which of the four truths are found in this thing? It looks like the Buddhists brought four different people, glued them together to make what looks like one man. The four uh, truths, misery, he's happy. <laughs> Dissatisfaction, he's really happy. Misery originates within the craving, he's been craving a lot of food and the pleasures of this life. The truth that this craving can be eliminated didn't work for the Buddha. And the truth that this elimination is the result, result of following a methodical way, he never found the way. Ya Muslims, if no one watches Hamza Yusuf, I wouldn't waste my time. I'm working on so many books, Alhamdulillah. But when I see that more than a million people watch some of the videos of this man who's totally lost, he can't find Islam since he became a Muslim. He brought ideas from the time when he was uh, Christian into Islam. He says that uh, the Christians don't believe three gods in three gods. They don't. He says they really don't. Really? When Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تَقُولُوا ثَلَاثَةَ Don't say three. إِنَّمَا هُوَ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدٌ Because he's only one ilah. So three what? Three aliha, the Quran, that describes the Jews and Christians as being mushrikun, as Imam Ibn Taymiyyah stated. I mentioned this in another video. In another video. Uh, we respond. And it doesn't matter how many people see this video and how many people uh, share the video. Uh, we do what we can to help our religion. Sometimes I feel very tired and uh, the asthma bothers me at night wake up in the morning for Fajr and then Alhamdulillah come start working until after Isha every day 
seven days a week, except when I have to go somewhere. And uh, I feel that this job is the best job there is. Gives me energy and satisfaction because I want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe in the six pillars of Iman, five pillars of Islam, like so many other Muslims. And we want to fulfill the message that was sent with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, how can people call this man a sheikh? I don't understand, but we try. Uh, even if one person listens to what I'm saying, uh, then I'm satisfied. Please, we need $1,400 for the desktop to pay back the money. Can you help us? Inshallah. Either on the website islamlife.com or email me islamlife at gmail.com with the nine books we did alhamd since Ramadan. Uh, the number of books Allah allowed us to produce and booklets has exceeded 70. Some of them are behind me. Saying la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah is a treasure. Keep saying it. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to support our religion and to guide us all to the best ideas, creeds, practices, statements, and to make us servants of his religion. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.